All right. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Trey, or Treycraft as my handle. You'll notice it through Academy and other places. I'm here today going to talk to you a little bit about one of my favorite things to do when looking for some juicy information or creds or something like that once we've landed on a host. This is my talk, Treasure Hunting, Taking Riches from Your Sticky Notes. So who am I? My name's Trey. Again, I'm Treycraft. Uh, I'm one of the content devs for Hack the Box Academy. I've got certs and stuff like that. If those things are important to you, um, you can check them out on LinkedIn. And then there's my Twitter handles if you are curious or care. Let's get on to why you're actually here and why you're listening to me right now. So the hook. What if I told you that everything you've ever typed into sticky notes is still there? Do you remember what all you've put in those notes? For some of you, you're like, eh, whatever. I don't even open the app. It's fine. It's no big deal. But for others, like I used to do for sure, this can be a little concerning because every now and then you don't really think about it, but information piles up and you start hiding things in there like IP addresses or specific websites for internet stuff. You start putting in credentials because you don't want to remember the 399th password you just had to write, things like that. And all of that comes together and makes for a really good spot for an attacker to gather a bunch of stuff on you. Now, this statement seems super serious, but it's kind of a eh, if statement. It depends on how you use the app and what's going on, but it's still got some pretty interesting quirks with it, and we'll talk about those today. Back in April, myself and the, um, the awesome Mr. Ben, we were kind of just sitting around and we were debating on the sticky notes app because I was playing with it at the time and talking about different places where we look to find credentials and things like that. And then I started wondering like how the application act actually works, where it hides um, the data as it writes the notes. And when I started digging into this and started looking into it a little further, it had a bunch of little functions like syncing your notes across devices and applications. Um, allowing Cortana to play with it. And it just kind of got me suspicious about what's going on back there. I wanted to see how it was holding it all. So started looking into it, looking into if there was a quick way to actually reach out and grab those sticky notes off a host without ever having to interact with the graphical user interface part of the application. So let's dive down this rabbit hole. Sticky notes 101. What are they really? So the Microsoft.notes, aka Sticky Notes app, is really just an application that comes pre-installed, or you can grab it from the Microsoft Store if you want to update it on any Windows PC. So it's not just on PC versions. It's on their PC, their server. It comes pre-installed, I believe, on their whole little Windows phone stuff too. All it is is simple dynamically. They can be typed, handwritten, pictures, um, any other kind of media little notes you see like we have down here on the screen. There's nothing really crazy to them at, on the outside. They're capable of syncing across all of these different devices and services to include um, Outlook and OneNote. It sets a feed in both, so your mailbox is directly linked to these as well. It allows you to do some other kind of trippy stuff with Cortana as well. So if you've got Cortana running in your Windows host and you've allowed it to um, provide insights on your information and on stuff you type. It can do things like set up and schedule emails for you. It can send you reminders. It can set alerts. It can do watches on things like stock prices and other stuff like that. So it gets pretty powerful and Cortana starts digging in pretty deeply and paying attention to what you type into them. But for the most part, it's just a front end simple little app where you can type and jot a note down and it sits on your desktop. And that's really about it. When looking into this and looking into the app and trying to find out more about it to see if there's any kind of documentation or help and stuff like that, there's really not. There's nothing out there that's published to show how it works besides a couple of the release notes that can inform you on functions. I did a lot of digging around, a lot of asking questions. I even got to the point where I just couldn't find the info I was looking for that I put in a help ticket with Microsoft and talked with some of their admins. They're like, you know what we know. Everything that you have is what's published out there. And that boils down to basically one or two little conversations and the facts and one support website for Microsoft. And it's on sticky notes. That's it. 
So it took a little bit of digging to kind of find out what else going on here and what's working. So what's the problem with this? Well, the front end is just a nice little sticky note that you can see on your desktop, but the back end of this is actually an SQLite database. If you're running an older version of Windows, like Windows 7, or an older revision of Windows 10, it's a SNT file. It's not a SQL database just yet, but for modern Windows 10, it's a, a database like you see on the screen. So if the node exists, if you've created it before, those entries do not go away unless you specifically delete them. So an open sticky note will always have an entry. A sticky note where you just click the X and close it so it disappears off of your desktop still exists. So some of those notes that you think you might have gotten rid of or that they don't matter anymore, they're still there. They still exist as an entry. With this, keeping this database in mind and how it's syncing to, say, Outlook, so you have your notes in a data feed or for your OneNote where you can actually set this stream side by side, what other telemetry is being added with that, especially with insights being put into it? And these are the kind of questions I was asking, and these are the things that I couldn't really find. Playing around and digging on this, I tried capturing some PCAP, messing with it with um, Process Explorer and a couple other little tools out of Sys internal suite. It's really hard to kind of tell and see what's going on. The traffic as it syncs is HTTPS traffic, so you can't really do anything with that right now. This is still kind of a work in progress for me on the um, forensics and breakdown side of this, and I'm going to dig more into how it actually works and does its thing. There's some DLLs that I was getting hints at that are kind of popping up in there, but they're not published and there's nothing on them. So more to come with those. So I talked about this from a red perspective where I love pulling credentials and things like that out of these notes normally, but it used to require me to have direct access, look at the user's desktop, things like that, take screenshots. But there's different routes we can go. Since we now know that it's just an SQLite database, we can do a couple different things. So the first two places are the main spots to look. For Windows 10 versions 16.07 and newer, the actual database exists at this path here. So in the user accounts, app data folders, packages, or local packages, Microsoft, the Microsoft sticky notes name, and then you're looking in local state for the plum.sqli database. For anything 1607 or older on Windows 10 or some of the older versions of Windows as well, you can find it under the user's app data roaming Microsoft sticky notes. For there, you're looking for that SNT file. If you're trying to find the actual application now on Windows 10 or in newer any newer revision, basically over 1607, it's not called sticky notes. You can type in sticky notes into the little window or search bar and it'll pull up the application icon for you. But the actual executable is microsoft.notes.exe. This tripped me up for a little bit because I kept searching it and looking for it and it just wouldn't appear. Finally, I was like, oh, they must have changed the name and started digging and of course they did. You can find the actual executable and some of the DLLs it calls if you want to play with it at this path here. So we talked about what they are. We know where it's located now and what files we're going to mess with. How can we get a hold of them? How can we start stealing notes? We have a couple different routes that we can go, and we'll talk about those today. The first one would be utilizing PowerShell while you're on host to simply reach out and query the database locally and get the results back. The second one, you could create a copy of this, just take the entire database and use it offline later instead of trying to do execute operations and stuff on the victim host itself. Or I'm gonna show you a, a quick little Python tool that we wrote to make this a little easier and make the text output clearer. But for this, this first one here, you can see utilizing PowerShell, it does have a requirement for this to work on the host. You need the PSSQLite module implemented or installed. If you don't have that, it won't read right, and it's just going to tell you it couldn't parse the traffic or the data. But the TLDR of it is you go through, you want to make sure you validate and set the execution policy to allow you to execute scripts if you haven't done so already. 
Once you have that done, you need to import the PSSQLite module. From there, something like I have on the screen, just doing the, the variable and calling the path for the database. Set it as a variable. From there, we're going to invoke SQLite query. You target the database that you set as the variable. And then your query and what you're actually looking for to acquire the notes is you're going to select text from note. The Plum SQLite database has a bunch of different tables in there, but the one you care about and the one that has all the juicy info we want is note, specifically capital N O T E. Then from there, you can stop with the text. And here's what it looks like going this route with PowerShell. If you wanted to get more granular with this, if you wanted to look for only specific kind of notes, let's say um, notes the user only has open on their desktop, you could add a little more to your query. So there's two, there's an option that's set within the database itself uh, that helps show the note to the user if they want it. And the easy search on that is, is looking for open equals one. If it's one, the note is still open and it's active on the desktop of the user. If that value for open is set to zero, that means the sticky note is closed, but not deleted. So those would be the two you want to look for. So second option, let's just take that loop for later. The easiest route is going back to the paths we had talked about. So that app data local packages, the Microsoft sticky notes path, local state, grab the plum SQLI database. And to be safe, and if you want some more granular data to do some other things later, let's say you're not using this from a red perspective, you're just using it for forensics. You want to grab the um, SQLite WAL file with it as well. This will allow you to have kind of like the track changes and stuff for the database and the actual full DB for later. Grab those, exfil them off the host. Then from there, you can go any route you really want with it. If you wanted to keep it quick and simple, you could run strings against the database. This is really messy, so I don't necessarily recommend it. It's just a quick route to get a look inside and see if there's anything there you care about digging deeper on. Or the other easy way, which just requires you having another little app, is using something like DB Browser to look at the actual database as a whole. Then you get this nice output, like you can see down here at the bottom of the screen right now, to where you can choose which table you're looking in, what notes you look at, and just have a nice easy picture. This would probably be the preferred route between this or using the PowerShell on host because you have it for later, you have a copy and you can see it, you're not running any extra commands or actions on the user's host. The problem with this is, is depending on the database and how much they keep in their notes, stuff like that, this is a potential network connection. This is traffic being passed out of the network off host. So there's the chance for alerting because of that. The third one we told you about was a new little tool we put out. It's nothing too crazy. We made what we call note dump.py. What this is doing for us is it's going to parse the database and just strip out all the text from the note table for us and print it in an easy to read format. Over here on the right, you can see I've got it ran as a test user and dumped the tables out just to have a bunch of stuff and output in here. This output's a lot cleaner. We're not getting a lot of the extraneous data and stuff that's tied into the table itself. We just ripped out the actual text sections. And here's what we get for each note. So how does this work? Well, we've got the tool work or tooled out to work in two different ways. The first one right now is you can just point it at the default location. Let's say you land on a user host that has Python installed already. You can run this one on their host pretty easily. It doesn't it require anything extra of you. It just needs Python. From there, drop it on host, run Python, and then note dump.py. It'll give you the same style output. Or if you want, you can also point it at an XFIL database. So you can say run Python and specifically the path to the database itself. If that makes sense. So two different ways. The first one, you're just looking at the database on the victim itself on their host. The second one, you've exfilled it for later. You have it set in whatever directory you want to put it in as you exfil it on your host. You just run the file against it and that'll go. 
pretty easy. We do have some more functionality we're going to build into this later. It's pretty interesting some of the stuff you can do. Um, I guess some of the coming soon features would be being able to parse the older ST files as well. Um, adding in being able to do remote reads and exfil of that information. So instead of you having to exfil a text file with all that data in it or pull the database for later, we're going to make it to where you can just remotely read and access. And then some of the other stuff we're looking at would be also trying to recover deleted notes out of that database. There's several tools out there already that are had this capability of interacting with SQLite databases and attempting to recover and recreate that data. So we're going to see if we can kind of merge it together. So we talked about what the issue was. We talked about what can be done to actually reach out and steal those notes and different ways of doing that. Let's talk about some of the potential mitigations or detections from the blue side we can do. Unfortunately, what can be done really isn't that much specifically when dealing with this type of exfil. So if an attacker is already on your host, it's likely that they're going to have access to that app data directory and there's nothing you can do to stop that, especially if they're as you an authenticated user or if they've got an admin or system. Some of the stuff we do recommend that you do, however, especially in an enterprise environment, would be to turn off the sync capabilities and um, Cortana's digital insights functions. I don't see any real reason why you would need this or why this would provide you with more capability than risk in an enterprise environment. You're just allowing for multiple exposure points. Your notes are no longer just on your desktop. They're in your Outlook. They're in your OneDrive. They're synced across multiple devices. They're in um, Office 365. It's just multiple points for them to now be somewhere else that you're not quite tracking and allows someone a higher probability of finding those potentially sensitive notes and taking them from you. We could also do things like practice proper cyber hygiene, like not putting um, sensitive passwords in our sticky notes, not putting IP addresses or specific websites where you use them with, not putting things like your social security numbers or your pens to different websites, things like that, all of those. Just use good practices. Don't save information in there that you wouldn't want someone else finding. Doing a lot of the standard workstation hardening procedures will help as well. You could lock this down with GPO if you wanted to. It's a little more tricky than just disabling the insights itself, but you can do it. Then the other one, I would say if remembering passwords is a pain for you or you have to keep 400 different passwords for all the different websites you use for work and stuff, utilize a password manager. In the end, that's going to be way more safe and secure than just putting it in a sticky note and trying to find it that way. These are just some of the recommendations that we're putting out there. Past that, dealing with the actual sticky notes database itself, there's really not much you can do except watch an alert potentially on uh, copies or accesses on that file or any kind of changes made to it. But the thing this could potentially do is give you a lot of false alerts and stuff. Anytime you write a sticky note or you make a change to one of your notes, it'll alert on that. So there's a good margin of error there. So quick and easy talk, we talked about sticky notes. Uh, I really like using them or using it as a good place to try and find some quick information. So I thought it would be fun to share this with you guys. Real quick, I'd like to give um, some kudos and a shout out to Mr. Ben for help with research and poking and prodding and digging through this some more. It's been bugging the both of us for a while, so we'll, we'll play with it some more. Hopefully some new stuff will come out of it soon. I'd also like to give a special thanks here to 21Y4D for his help with building this tool. I myself am not a dev or amazing at coding, but he is awesome, and this wouldn't have played out or worked without him. For the tool itself, we're going to put this out there for anyone to use. You can find it at the link you see on the screen. It should be up and appearing after the con starts. And with that, that's all I've got. Thanks for listening, guys.